Today, I want to talk to you about shoulder injuries. The shoulder is composed of three joints, the glenohumeral, acromioclavicular, and the sternoclavicular joints. Always start with the history. Important components of the history include, number one, is there any recent trauma? Number two, is the patient involved in repetitive motion? Number three, does the patient have previous injury? Number four, what was the position of the arm at the time of injury? And number five, has the shoulder ever been dislocated? After taking a good history, the next thing is the physical examination. Completely expose both shoulders, looking for one, asymmetry, two, bone deformity, three, swelling and bulging, and four, chronic muscular changes. After inspection, palpate the affected shoulder for tenderness, crepitus, and deformity. Perform a neurovascular examination. Keep in mind that the axillary nerve supplies motor branches to the deltoid and teres minor. The sensory branch of the axillary nerve, which is also known as the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, innervates the skin on the lateral aspect of the upper arm. The deltoid has three heads. The anterior head starts on the clavicle. It flexes and internally rotates the arm. The lateral or middle head starts on the acromion and it abducts the arm. The posterior head starts on the spine of the scapula and it extends and laterally rotates the arm. The deltoid inserts into the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. These are the muscles of the rotator cuff. They are supraspinatus, infraspinatus, subscapularis, and teres minor. Like the deltoid, the teres minor receives innervation from the motor branch of the axillary nerve. The teres minor produces external rotation, extension, and adduction of the arm. The supraspinatus provides abduction of the arm. The infraspinatus stabilizes the shoulder joint and is the second most common injured muscle. The subscapularis provides internal rotation of the arm and stabilizes the shoulder joint. It is the most used muscle in the shoulder and the most commonly injured. Diagnostic testing. Most patients with shoulder injuries and a positive exam will end up obtaining radiographs. However, there are patients with shoulder pain who do not require radiographs, namely those with no fall or no swelling, those with a fall but no swelling or pain at rest, and those with a fall and pain at rest but no swelling and normal range of motion. Let's talk about shoulder dislocation. There are four classifications of shoulder dislocation. Anterior, which is the most common, then posterior, which is rare, and it is due to seizures or electrical injuries, then inferior and lastly superior. These patients usually have exquisite pain around the shoulder. The nerve that is at risk for injury is the axillary nerve, but the brachial plexus, radial nerve, and axillary artery may also be injured. The most common bony deformity is a hill sac lesion, which is an indentation of the humeral head. The methods of reduction that are um, used are, number one, traction and counter-traction. Number two, the Stimson. In this, the patient lies prone with a weight attached to the wrist. The technique is easy to perform and comfortable for the patient. However, it is time consuming. The next is the external rotation. The external rotation method involves gently and slowly externally rotating the shoulder and flexing the shoulder 
to 90 degrees. This will reposition the humeral head about the glenoid or coracoid and generally effect reduction. Then the scapular manipulation involves having the patient lie prone with affected arm hanging off the bed or having the patient sit up while an assistant applies forward traction to the arm. The physician uses one hand to rotate the inferior tip of the scapula medially while stabilizing the superior and medial edges with the other hand. Here is a, some caution to never to forget. Number one, dislocated shoulders with fractures should never be reduced in the ED. And number two, make sure there are pre and post radiographs for patient with shoulder dislocation. Well, thank you for watching. I do hope that this reminder will provide confidence in caring for patients with shoulder injury and or dislocation. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you well. Good night.